Well, this is a little bit different video here. I'm going to do a little bit of soldering and stuff. So I thought I'd just do a look down type of view here. Currently, I'm just trying to get some uh, stuff I need lined up. I don't generally do soldering in here, so I'm kind of getting a little adjusted to it. Really have the lighting I like. Okay, so this is some shrink tubing. First thing I'm going to do is just get some ready. Once I solder this, I'm going to shrink it together. Set that over here and just put it in the tray. So my purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use black for both. I don't have a small red one. The purpose of this video is I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, doing. I have a Helltech board that came in. I'm looking for the pigtail here. I've got it. Uh, you get it in this little bag comes the external antenna and a power cord, extra power cord. You do have to power these up. So let me grab that. Uh, Alright, do have to power it up. So they come with this little pigtail right here. And a lot of people are just using little baby batteries, but I was I was looking up my uh, my Lily Go here, my T Beam, and I like that eight six fifty eighteen six fifty battery. So I thought, well, why don't I just get a bunch of them? You know, so I I ordered these these, and actually all this stuff is really inexpensive. So I ordered a bunch of those, and and then also these little cradles. They come um, in a huge bag. I'll put all, a link to all these in the description, but you know, a very large bag full of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's just a real quick count. I think eight of them. And so what I thought I'd do is, once I solder this and shrink it, just to fix it this way, that's, that's obviously a large battery for this device, but Something like that may last two or three days. And if I just want to temporarily deploy these somewhere, then I could do that. So I'm just going to jump in here and get started on it. Um, first thing I'm going to do is slide over my shrink tubing that I cut off. Because once I make the solder, I want to be able to seal it up really good. I'm going to turn on our solder station here and get it warming. And I don't have a microscope like some of these guys do, so you just have to imagine what this looks like, I suppose. Oh, you can kind of see it there. You know, I'm shooting this 4K, so I may try to jump in on that and post. Solder here. Uh, let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, it's already warmed up pretty good. Just going to apply a little bit of rosin on there. So that's not my normal station, so I don't have the cameras in that room.
It's got the positive wire done, so now what I'm going to do is pull this heat shrink over. And I'll just hit it real quick, like with the blower here. Heat gun. This just kind of helps. And cleans it up a little bit. I'll shut off in a second. <coughs> and now I'm going to do the negative wire the same way. I'm going to go ahead and slip the heat shrink over. Don't forget to do that. Studio lighting's not the best lighting for <laughs> this kind of work. Struggling to see it all. I may have a really hot light right above me here when I'm doing this kind of work. It's got a big one of those desk lamp type things with a magnifying glass. Certainly makes this part a lot easier. I usually don't even use the uh, open hands here magnifying glass on them. I just use the uh, big one. Feels good, feels good. Alright. Pull the shrink wire up. Shrink tubing, sorry. Get that about the center. Bring the heater back on. Just kind of twirling out a little bit. Go. All right, positive, positive. That's plugged in. You know, if I wanted to get a little fancier, I could tape all that up, and I, I may end up doing that later, a little later. Could have shrunk it too. Obviously, this is just testing now, so. It very well there, so I may end up doing something like this. Now, I will say this is the antenna. I've got the antenna bent. I'm, I'm just using these. These work really great. Uh, so I'm show you what it kind of looks like inside there. This is another board. This little PEC, uh, IPEC connector connects here, and this just kind of bends in there and hides, hides up in there. So knowing that, that my antenna's on this side, I'm going to favor... Uh, most of the metal and stuff down here and honestly I could even just do a separate kind of uh, container or something that might, uh, might be an idea but something like that it's pretty crazy the battery's bigger than that all right so got some batteries positive and go look down in here double check it you don't, I know we are so used to saying the spring's always negative, but you want to double check it. And I've got a positive indicator there, so. Moment of truth. I'm going to turn it over so we can all see it. Look at that. So now I'm just down to a little bit of uh, cleanup. I don't know. I, may, I don't want to waste. Uh, tape it to it, but that's, I wasn't sure. So obviously if this was going to live on here, I think I would just go with a, um, I would cut that down quite a bit. Maybe do something like this. And actually I wouldn't have the wire behind it, although that 
pigtail comes out so let's, let's just think this through could do something like this you know and let the keep try to keep we'll get the wires away and stuff but uh, anyways just kind of giving a quick overview of something the main goal here my thinking on these boards so I've got another one and I think I mentioned this in my last video one of my goals is to, to take some of these um, grab it and a jump around. I don't think I have it down here on the table looking for it yeah I do right here I had it ready so I could come off this Ipex here and these just snap on there and I'm just going to kind of hold it for now this would come off here and then this will go into my external outside antenna and this is kind of a bulkhead type connect not a bulkhead being any coupler but I'm actually going to take this off it's got a little gasket here I'm going to cut a hole in a piece of PVC cap uh, it looks actually it looks just like this this is my uh, tip tip tenor for my cam but that's what it looks like and I've got them laying in here I just for sake of time I'm just going to show you this will come out essentially the center of this hypothetically let's pretend this is it so it stick out here the caps down over a piece of PVC and it may only be this big you know something to hold all of this so my original thought was I'll throw this down in the bottom you know the jumper come off here had the antenna and all of this could essentially fit in a piece of PVC something like this and then the big antenna is the, is the biggest thing so and again I'll probably cover everything tape it conceal it really good and and hide it camouflage it and I'm even thinking about maybe an external antenna on one so this would be one if I was to stick it all up there and I'd also have to have an input for a charge controller and you know, we, some people were asking, I'm just going to throw this out too. Let me uh, set this aside for now and talk to you a little bit about what a buck converter, B-U-C-K, buck converter does. So here's a, here's a large one. This takes 12 volts and converts it down to 5 volts. And that's all DC. So if I was to power this up, i come in here and have 5 volts here. So if I was doing like a, let's say a permanent location on one of these and I needed extremely long time to, to have this running and I can't access it, well, I may go grab like a 12 volt uh, LiPo battery or something a little more uh, forgiving to the colder temperatures during the winter, something like that. And then I could run a buck converter. Now you do have a little bit of loss, but since we're going down, I don't think it's going to be that much. Uh, anybody with experience on measuring the loss through a buck converter, we're not converting it from AC to DC, so I don't think you have loss there. I, and I'm I'm almost recanting that. Uh, I'm going to take that back. I don't think we'll have much loss because it's just stored energy. It's not being used. Essentially, so I'm thinking this is going to be a very efficient way. So I can tap into some 12 volt batteries, have it come down to 5 volt, and then uh, let that, uh, you know, these boards, the Helltech boards, don't have a solar input. But I could get a solar charge controller, uh, or I could even convert this over and just go straight into USB-C on these. When I plug this into USB-C, that's going to charge the, the LiPo. So that would, that would also do it. I think I would go that route. Because then you don't have to worry about a charge controller. The um, the boards that we have outside right now, the uh, Wizblox, they have a solar charge controller built on them. Now we are ordering, uh, we've got them ordered. Uh, somebody left a comment about uh, adding a green module. And that's supposed to help stabilize and get a little better 5 volts. So we've, we have ordered those and uh, we're going to try that and see how that works that should hopefully stabilize it. I'm not 100% satisfied. Now, I'll tell you what started me down this road, and I've got more stuff coming, so I'll, I'll be kind of expanding on this a little bit. 
the what got me started on this is uh, especially in the winter time we have a lot of clouds and stuff here where we're at and uh, you know we can get a couple maybe a day or so out of a good charge on the batteries but then what happens is uh, those whiz blocks will seem to lock up and I think it has to do some of the people on the forum were saying it had to do with the uh, variable voltage because solar doesn't just put out a solid five volts it varies quite a bit so so we're thinking that could be part of it and so a lot of the people were recommending switching over to those and um, and trying those so I'll let you know how that goes but my thought is I could take two of these put together parallel and so if you have to be careful which way you go, if you go series, that doubles it up. So these are 3.7 volts, so it'd be 9 point whatever, 10 point whatever volts if you put them in parallel. So I would run two of these in parallel. So now I still have 3.7 amps, but I have, you know, this is 3.4. If I put another one in here, that's going to be another 3.4. So now we're talking 6.8, 6 6.8 amps. And if I can get... You know, off of something like this, if I can get a week off of one of these, well, imagine two of them. And then you add the solar charge controller in there, or solar capabilities, whether that's the USB or, or whatever. So, anyways, that's just a real quick, simple project. I know it looks like 20 minutes, man. I didn't think it would be that long of a video. I'm sorry. But uh, hopefully it's good information. The soldering wasn't the purpose of this video. The main purpose of this video is to help you understand how you can expand the, uh, you know, the time of use, the batteries on these things. So, and again, if I was going to put this in an outdoor case, I would take off the fact this the little antenna that comes on these, uh, whichever one you got. If you got this kind, you're going to want to. If you're going to use this case, you have to swap out for these, and because they're the only ones that'll fit in the little case. Now. If I was, if my original thinking is on one of these, I'm going to make it for like my daughter. And they have a hole here on the back just for that power lead to come out. But I, they make little bitty batteries that'll set right here. Now granted, you know, you'd have to charge it maybe every day, once a night, you know, or something like that. But uh, it would be good to, for something portable. Then you could just glue all that there, you know, kind of clean it up really nice. But uh this was just an example of how you can get more more juice all right you guys stay tuned i'm going to keep putting out videos like this this one kind of got ahead in the series but honestly i was just I, this is a project i was working on and i wanted to just share that with you and kind of take you on that journey thanks again thanks for subscribing got uh got some links in the bio for some of the stuff i use yeah, and I'll, I'll start putting some of these uh, batteries on there. I just purchased these from Amazon. So I'll put those links in the bio. Um, just, just appreciate everybody. And uh, we'll keep putting out content like this. Thank you.